English satirical magazine Punch, he's in Australia at the moment as guest speaker at the Bulletin Black and White Artists Awards this Friday. His visit has been extremely timely in the wake of the death of billionaire media tycoon Robert Maxwell. A huge vacuum has been created in the newspaper industry. David Thomas joins us this morning. Good morning, David. Good morning. Well, I did say billionaire uh, tycoon yeah. there. Was that uh, before or after? Well, I mean, that's the interesting thing about Maxwell is, is the question of, of just how much his empire has left, or at least how much it has left after the bankers have had, have had their go at it, because obviously it was a man in, in a great deal of, of financial uh, strain, shall we say. And, um, and what happens to the empire now that he's gone? I know there have been announcements here in Australia that you know, it'll be continue under the same management and it's going to be run by his sons, but I don't think that's the end of the story by any means. You think they'll lose faith? Well, with those, those huge companies that, that have the force of one person at their helm, it doesn't matter whether it's Packer or Murdoch or Maxwell, that person is so crucial and the faith that the banks or whoever have in that person is so central that you've always got to wonder what happens you know, when, that, when that great central figure goes. Maxwell has several of his sons working in the business and the question now is whether they turn out to be the kind of sons that say Rupert Murdoch was or the kind of son that uh, Warwick Fairfax was and you know, who knows at this point. Yes, he certainly uh, was no shrinking violet. He sure uh, wasn't, no. Stories you hear rude, <laughs> aggressive, bombastic. How do you read him? Well, that would just, that's what his friends would say, certainly. <laughs> and I, um, he was, certainly wasn't shrinking, he was an expanding violet. I mean, he was enormous. Um, he was actually known in England as Captain Bob. Um, I, I heard the first joke, actually, about Robert Maxwell over the phone last night. He's now known as Captain Bob, Bob, Bob. Bob, Bob, <laughs> along the water. They um, move quick, don't they? They sure do. There's nothing like sick humour to, to travel around the world at high speed. Okay, Robert Maxwell, he is now not going to run the empire. It does depend on what the banks uh, have to say about it. But without him in the industry, uh, looking fairly, sh the, you know, the publishing industry, what will happen? Which direction do you think it's going to take? The industry as a whole? Yeah. Well... I mean, how big an effect Exit Maxwell is it going to have? Well, his titles, um, the fund the, the, his titles, his main titles in Britain are the Daily Mirror and the Sunday Mirror and the People, and they are fundamentally very strong, powerful titles. Um, the Daily Mirror has three and a half million copy sales a day, so it's a very valuable property for somebody, whoever that somebody may be. I think people will want it. I mean, there's no way the papers are going to go. Who do you think might get it? Well, <laughs> if I was Kerry Packer. And I was sitting here in Australia taking all kinds of trouble for wanting to buy the Fairfax Empire. Personally, I might think, hey, I could go to England, I could pick up, I could pick up the papers if they are for sale, which that's, at this point they're not. But if they were for sale, and, and nobody's going to complain if Packer buys in England, he's got no other media holdings there mm. particularly that I'm aware of. If I was Kerry Packer, I'd be pretty tempted to call it a day down here and, mm. and nip up north. May not find it amusing as buying uh, Fairfax, though. <laughs> okay. A lot easier, perhaps. As I uh, uh, mentioned before, you're here for the Black and White Artists Awards. Now, right. I've, I've got a book of some stunning illustrations, yeah, some wonderful book, cartoons. Let's go, uh, go through here and sure. have a look at, uh, at some of the ones. What, what do you think of Australian illustrators, cartoonists? Well, I, I mean, I, I have a very high um, <coughs> um, opinion of them. Um, we, get, we see a lot of Australian work in England. A lot of Australian cartoonists come to England either permanently or, or you know, to stay. Mm. Um, in fact, we actually have a cover um, this week's issue of Punch has Robert Maxwell on the cover by an appalling coincidence. And it was drawn by a young Aussie cartoonist called David Hensley, who arrived in London just a few months ago and just blew us away. He was so yes. talented. Obviously, Pat Oliphant won everybody knows around the world. And coming here, you can see that there's a whole new group of people who, whether they stay in Australia or whether they go abroad, are going to have the same. Oh, that's Steve Palazzo's work. And mm -hmm. Suzanne White, who you can see there, I think is a fantastically talented artist. She what does it take to be a great artist. I couldn't tell you, but when, when you see it, you know. I mean, I was flicking through the book, and, and there's one of, of Bob Hawke. Oh, that's yes, Mark Davids. I like that one a lot. Um, uh, that, that, that's the, um, the Levitation Institute being blown out to sea by, by a sudden breeze. Which, a lovely touch. I don't know what it takes, except you know it when you see it. But Australians do do well overseas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and there are people in that book who, who have it. You, you flick through and you just go, no, no. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. No, so what something. would you suggest to the people who have it? Well, it's really difficult. This is an amazing country to be in. If you want a nice place to live, this is a much, much nicer place to live than London, New York. But if you New want York. to be a successful illustrator, what do you do? In, in every field, there's the big league. If you want to be a big actor, in the end, you go to Hollywood. If you want to be a really big cartoonist, in the end, I think you have to go either to Fleet Street or to the States. Gee, your talk on Friday night, you're not going to impress a few editors. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean that as any insult. I mean, to be like, mm -hmm. if you're an English tennis player, would you stay in England? No way. You know, every, every field has its own particular center of action. And, 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 and I guess Fleet Street is for cartoonists what Hollywood is for actors. Mm. Um, you know, I, I don't, that is not intended as any kind of insult, but I think that's how, I think that's how it works. Well, I must admit, with the uh, new Punch uh, magazine that is just out, we won't be seeing that for a little while, but it is an extraordinary coincidence that you've got Max It's Collins a horrifying there. coincidence, yes. And was I, it one of your, uh, your illustrators that did the uh, Captain Bob, Bob, Bob? Bob, Bob. Uh, no, I, I can't claim, I, I can't, that, was, that, was, that went around Fleet Street, and um, somebody told it to a, to a Daily Mirror journalist and gone punched on, his, on the nose for his pains, so um, oh. that's a joke that carries a certain danger warning with it. But, yes, uh, I bet it does. David Thomas, very good to talk to you. And you, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. David Thomas, who is the editor of uh, famous satirical magazine Punch, and he's here for the Bulletin Black and White Artists Awards, and we do have some very talented, talented illustrators. Ron, news time? 19 after